we want to solve the trig equation two cosine squared x minus cotangent x equals zero over the given interval. We will use the strategy of converting to sines and cosines and therefore we'll substitute cosine x divided by sine x for cotangent x. This gives us two cosine squared x minus cosine x divided by sine x equals zero. And because we have a fraction here, let's write two cosine squared x as a fraction with a denominator of one. In order to subtract the fractions, we know we must have a common denominator, which in this case is sine x. So for the next step, we will multiply the numerator and denominator of this first fraction by sine x. This gives us two cosine squared x times sine x all over one times sine x. And we still have minus cosine x over sine x. But notice now we do have a common denominator of sine x and therefore we can subtract these fractions. The denominator is going to remain sine x and the numerator is now two cosine squared x sine x minus cosine x. And this is still equal to zero. Notice how we have a fraction equal to zero. A fraction is equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero and the denominator is non-zero, which means the fraction on the left is equal to zero when the numerator of two cosine squared x sine x minus cosine x is equal to zero, and also the denominator of sine x can't equal zero. Sine x can't equal zero because if it did, we would have division by zero. We could have also gotten the same result by clearing the fraction from the equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by sine x. And now to solve this equation here, the next step is to factor out the greatest common factor, which is cosine x. Factoring out cosine x gives us cosine x times the quantity two cosine x sine x minus one equals zero. Let's continue on the next slide. Notice how we have a product on the left and therefore the product is equal to zero when the first factor of cosine x equals zero or when the second factor of two cosine x sine x minus one equals zero. But looking at the second equation, notice how we have two trig functions here and therefore we have to perform another substitution using the double angle identities shown here on the right. Notice two sine theta cosine theta is equal to sine two theta and therefore two cosine x sine x is equal to sine two x. Performing the substitution gives us sine two x minus one equals zero. Solving for sine two x, we add one to both sides, which gives us sine two x equals one. So notice here we have cosine x equals zero. Here we have sine two x equals one. Because we have a double angle here, we'll perform another substitution and let t, another variable, equal two x so notice now we have cosine x equals zero or sine two x equals one. Because we have a double angle here, we'll perform another substitution and let the variable t equal two x. So if t equals two x, we will solve the equation sine t equals one. But we need to be careful here because if t is equal to two x and x is on the interval from zero to two pi, two x is on the interval from zero to four pi, and therefore so is t. So we'll have to solve t over the interval from zero to four pi and then come back and find x. Notice if t is equal to two x, if we multiply both sides by one half, x is equal to one half t. So let's go to the unit circle and find our angles. Let's first solve the equation cosine x equals zero. Remember on the unit circle, x equals cosine theta and y equals sine theta which means to solve the equation cosine x equals zero, we are looking for the points on the unit circle where the x coordinate is zero. 
and these points occur on the y-axis here as well as here, which means one solution for x is x equals pi over two radians or one half pi radians. Another solution is three halves pi radians. So again, these are solutions for x, which we are solving the equation for. And now let's solve sine t equals one. Remember though, because t is equal to two x, and two x would be the interval from zero to four pi, we need to solve this equation for t from zero to four pi radians. To solve sine t equals one, we look for y coordinates of the unit circle that are equal to one, which only occurs in one place, which is here. So one solution for t, remember this is t not x, is pi over two radians or one half pi radians. So let's go ahead and record this, t equals one half pi. Remember, we're solving on the interval from zero to four pi radians. So another angle in the interval that's coterminal to one half pi radians would be this angle here. One complete revolution past one half pi radians, which is one half pi plus two pi, which is five halves pi radians. So t can also equal five halves pi radians. But we're not done here, we now need to find x, where x is equal to one half times t. So using t equals one half pi, we would have x equals one half times one half pi, which is one fourth pi. And then when t equals five halves pi, x is equal to one half times five halves pi, which gives us five fourths pi. So notice how these solutions in terms of x are on the interval from zero to two pi radians. We have a total of four solutions. We have x equals one half pi, x equals three halves pi, x equals one fourth pi, and x equals five fourths pi. I hope you found this helpful.